Bromine vapor is roughly five times more dense than air. It can be poured from one flask to another. The density of bromine, like that of all gases, is directly proportional to the molecular mass of its molecules in the gas phase. All right, so this tank over here, it even sounds different when we fill it up. So here, listen to this. It sounds different. So, so heavy. So and if you feel this, so it, is, it feels heavy, too. Just when we rock this back and forth and feel it. Oh, man. So this it's is like a pool of water, almost. Yeah. Like it's got water in it, and it's got weight. And it's just gas. All right, so the same thing you're going to do, but uh, here's what I want you to do. I want you to exit. Uh, all your air goes out, okay. and then breathe in, and then I want you to do the intro to the podcast. Ready? Just tell our, okay. tell our listeners at home uh, something of importance. Ready? All right, here we go. He's bringing in the air. He's Right into his lungs. See now you can do that with some sort of then you're really doing that. You're not there's no tricks behind the scenes or audio tricks. Is that it's still in your lungs, isn't it? It's still in my lungs, but it's coming out because I'm breathing Okay, now breathe in and then push it back out again. You're gonna have to do that a couple times because that's gas. I'm almost there. I'm almost there. Yep, one more. Ready? There it is. Hello, y'all. <laughs> and you're back in. There's a lot of information in these videos I just showed, so I want to take about it. Uh, talk about it. Um, first of all, what we're looking at here is how gas density uh, has some amazing effects when it comes to gases. Um, and I used to think uh, that air, you know, always lighter than air and stuff like that, no problem. And you know, helium, you know, you let it go and it goes away and stuff like that. But in reality, some gases are much denser than like air and helium and stuff like that. And uh, it's amazing. If you're ever around one of these gases, it literally, if you have a balloon of it, it feels really heavy. Uh, I used to use uh, argon once in a while. Argon is an example of a gas which is denser than air we're going to talk about. And it felt like heavier. And in the one video there, the guy said the balloon felt like water. And that's not an exaggeration. It really feels different. Uh, the first video there was of bromine. Bromine in the gas phase is much denser than air. So you could see them actually pouring the gas from one container to the next. And again, you wouldn't pour a lot of uh, gases that way, but because bromine is so heavy, you can do it, which is really cool. The second video showed uh, the two guys and the one guy took in, he breathed in some sulfur hexafluoride, which is SF6. And this is another super high molar mass gas. And it made his voice go really deep. He was talking like like this and that wasn't any kind of video effect right that's actually a natural effect this is the opposite of what happens uh, when you breathe in helium and I don't recommend this by any means but if you're like me and juvenile always um, and you breathe in helium from a balloon at a party your voice kind of goes like a chipmunk and it sounds kind of funny and stuff like that okay well lot gases that are smaller make your vocal cords get higher so you have higher pitched uh, kind of chipmunk voice. But on the other hand, these gases like sulfur hexafluoride, which arguably won't hurt you too bad as long as you don't go crazy with it, um, it has the opposite effect on your vocal cords and it makes them go deeper. And you can see after he breathed in some regular air, his voice went back to normal, but it's kind of fun. And then finally, the last video I think is really cool. They used some kind of heavy gas. I think it's sulfur.
sulfur hexafluoride. And you could see that the little boat made of aluminum there actually floated on the invisible gas. It looks like it's levitation, but that's just because that heavy gas is sitting at the bottom of that fish tank and the light uh, aluminum balloon actually floats, but they made the balloon sink by scooping out the invisible SF6 and pouring it into the um, little aluminum boat and then it finally sunk down. So it's pretty cool. Gases have just as many variety of properties as anything else, which is kind of crazy. So what we're talking about here, all these effects can be related to the density of gas. And that's the next thing we're going to look at. If you start with PV equals NRT, the ideal gas law, you can do some kind of useful manipulations to it. Moles over volume is what you get if you put the RT on the other side and the V on the other side. So N over V equals P over RT. And we're just rearranging there the ideal gas law. Now, you can substitute in for moles, you can substitute in the mass of the gas divided by the molar mass of the gas. So there's two M's right there. The little M is the grams of gas, and the big M is the molar mass of the gas. So for example, if we had uh, two moles, all right, and it was helium, the molar mass of helium is about four grams per mole, and little m then then if we have two moles would be about eight grams. Eight grams divided by about four grams per mole gives us two. All right. So just remember that little m is like grams and big M is the molar mass, the grams per mole on the periodic table. But more excitingly, M over V, grams over liters, that's the density, the density of the gas. So if you rearrange that a little bit, you get the density D equals PM over RT. And if you rearrange this a little bit more, you get PM equals DRT. And I like this version the best because PM is like evening, AM in the morning, PM in the evening, all right? PM equals dirt. So sometimes I call this the evening dirt equation. And yes, I am juvenile. I know big time, but this is what helps me to remember it. And why I like this equation, and I think you should too, is it shows that there's a relationship of the density of gas D to the molar mass M. So when the videos I showed there with bromine and sulfur hexafluoride, those were hardcore, very high molar mass gases. All right. Sulfur hexafluoride and the bromine there were both about 150 grams per mole, something like that. Those are much bigger molar masses relative to helium, which is about four grams per mole. So molar mass of gas directly affects the density. As molar mass of your gas increases, the density increases, assuming pressure and temperature are the same. Conversely, if you have a light gas like helium, small molar mass, you'll have a small density. Um, density for gases usually is measured in grams per liter. So in Chem 221, we saw that liquids were usually grams per milliliter and solids were usually grams per centimeter cubed and a milliliter and a centimeter cubed are the same, etc., etc. Well, for gases, it's almost always in grams per liter. So if you ever have a density of the gas, make sure you record it grams per liter. Here's a question that we can use that last evening dirt equation to answer. It says, which gas has the greatest density at 25 degrees Celsius and one atmosphere of pressure? Okay, so this relationship is quite asking about the density, the little D in the last one. And you remember on the last slide, the equation was evening dirt PM equals DRT. And in this question, the temperature is the same, the R value, R constant, 0 0.082057 is the same, and the pressure is the same. So what we have here is how the molar mass is directly related to the density. And the bigger molar mass will have the bigger density, the greatest density. So to answer this question, you should really go through and find the molar mass of each of those gases 
gases. So O2, two oxygens, oxygen on the periodic table is 16, so 16 times two, about 32 grams per mole. Nitrogen, N2, about 28 grams per mole. Hydrogen, about two grams per mole. CO2, which is a number I've just used quite a bit, is about 44 grams per mole. And xenon is actually the biggest molar mass. If you look at xenon on the periodic table, it's about 131 grams per mole. And that's a lot bigger than all the other gases we went through there. So because xenon has the biggest molar mass, it should have the greatest density. Xenon would be most likely to cause your voice to get deep, stuff like that, uh, relative to the other gases because it has the biggest molar mass. Sometimes in chemistry, they talk about standard temperature and pressure. And this can be useful if you're comparing similar substances. And if they say, well, you know, what is the volume at STP? <laughs> okay, so STP is just standard temperature and pressure. Um, the thing about gases, though, is that standard temperature and standard pressure might not be the same as the other chapters. So FYI, standard temperature for gases is 273.1. 1.5 Kelvin. And that is, of course, where water freezes zero Celsius. Um, the reason why standard temperature is a little bit weird, though, most of the thermodynamic things we've looked at, so like we talked in Chem 221 about uh, delta H with a little zero, the standard conditions, the standard conditions for enthalpy, 298 Kelvin. And I am unclear why gases uh, have always revolved around 273 Kelvin, but they do. So just realize here that if you ever hear about STP for gases, the temperature 273.15 Kelvin, not 298. Standard pressure makes more sense. One atmosphere, that's the same standard pressure for the thermodynamic quantities. It's only the temperature value which changes. Now, if you have a gas at 273 Kelvin and one atmosphere of pressure, and you have exactly one mole of the gas, you can calculate that the standard volume for the gas, 22.4 liters. And at conventions, you'll sometimes see that little balloon ball there on the right-hand side picture. That balloon represents 22.4 liters. That's the volume that a mole of gas takes up under standard temperature and pressures. Now, probably that room was not at standard temperature, zero Celsius, which would be very cold. But if it was, and it was 22.4, Four liters that does represent the volume. I think it's kind of cool to see that little balloon because it does give you a symbolism as to what that volume means, all right, which is kind of interesting. But anyway, just FYI. So if you see anything about STP, it definitely means 273 Kelvin and one atmosphere of pressure all the time. And if you have one mole of gas, then the standard volume of that gas will be 22.4. If you have half of a mole of gas, though, then you wouldn't have 22.4 liters. You would have 11.2 liters, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You can calculate the differences. The 22.4 liters is only for if you have one mole of gas at STP. Remembering that I'm a Star Trek person, all right, Spock had to use two moles of neural gas. And in an episode from the original Star Trek, uh, Khan came and took over the Enterprise with his henchmen. And so Spock and Kirk were able to break free and they used something called neural gas to uh, knock all of Khan's guys out mostly. But anyway, I digress. Focus on the two moles, all right? So using STP, what would be the volume of Spock's gas? So let's assume that Spock Spock released the two moles of neural gas at STP, which again, one atmosphere of pressure, 273 Kelvin. Now you could go through and use um, V equals NRT over P, all right? The N would be two, R the gas constant, standard temperature would be 273, and one pre atmosphere of pressure on the bottom. However, uh, if you also look down there, one mole of gas would be 22.4 liters. And since Spock used two moles, we can multiply 22.4 times two, it should be 44.8 liters. All right. So that's the kind of utility for these kind of problems. It's really not about finding uh, <laughs> volumes of neural gas from Star Trek episodes, but I do enjoy talking about it. So my apologies.